What is up, New Beginning Church? Happy Wednesday morning to you and welcome to this devotional series. And yes, I'm back. I'm back in my office now. Uh, we've been in transition as we moved into the new building. And I think I was using Nate's office where they filmed the 411. And I'm like, I, I literally put my bookshelf together uh, yesterday. So today I'm filming in front of the bookshelf again. Somebody asked me one time, they're like, are those books fake? It's like, no, those are real, those are real books. And so anyway, I'm back in front of the bookshelf and uh, back in my own office. I don't know if I'm going to keep this look forever, but I thought let's dive in with this today. So let me encourage you. Incredible scripture. Third John doesn't have chapters. It's just one chapter. So when you look it up, it's third John. Technically it's chapter one, but there's only one and it's verse two. Now he's writing to a friend of his and he says, beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. And so I just want to encourage you today, like this is the Apostle Paul reaching out to his friend and say, hey man, I'm believing that you're going to prosper in all things. You know, I, I think that that word prosper has gotten a little bit of a bad rap here because I think that there's been something inside of Christianity kind of called the prosperity gospel that kind of took an idea and went too far with it. But the reality is God does want you to prosper. Uh, the Apostle Paul is telling his buddy, hey man, I hope you prosper in all things. And I really believe this. I think the idea of prosperity is simply this. I want to be growing. I want to be expanding. And I want to be on an upward trajectory. Um, this is a much better definition of success. Many times we just put a, a single point on the map somewhere and say, well, that's success. And if I ever could get to that, that would be successful. And that has so many different problems to it because, well, Let's be honest, even if we do get there, we usually don't feel satisfied. We just mush, we just move the finish line out further. Um, I, I can prove that if you think about how much money you make now. If you'd have told yourself 20 years ago this is what you were making, many of you'd be like, oh my gosh, I've arrived. And yet you make that much now and you don't feel that great about it, right? Because it's you push the finish line out further. And so, um, but, but prosperity in my mind, again, is that upward trajectory. It's not a single point on a map. It's saying, hey, over the course of the last six months, over the last year, over the last two or three years, I'm on a upward trajectory because we know that life doesn't move perfectly, right? There's just like the stock market, hopefully it's on an upward trajectory, but it's not perfect. It kind of ups and downs and ups and downs. And so the question is not, did I have a bad day? Maybe. Did you have a bad week? Maybe. Yeah. But like, hey, where were you at last year? Where were you at just five years ago? Are you on an upward trajectory and are you prospering in all? all things. And then he actually, I think, digs down on two big areas where he wants you to prosper. He goes, I hope that you prosper in all things and be in health as your soul prospers. So number one is this, God cares about your physical body. As a matter of fact, in the book of Corinthians, the apostle Paul's writing to them, he goes, hey, don't you know your body is the temple, the housing, the dwelling place of the spirit of God? Please take care of your body. And so we want you to be in good health. Now, again, I don't think that they focused on health back in their day the way that we ought to today. And the reason why is because they didn't have a bunch of processed foods and a bunch of chemicals and a bunch of... They were worried about famine more than they were worried about the things that we worry about today. And so for us, it's like, oh, no, no, there's a bunch of garbage food out there. Uh, there's a bunch of microwave and fast food and just terrible things. And again, if you look at Americans on the whole, I mean, there's a lot of us that are, again, outside of that zone of being healthy. Well, guess what? God wants your physical self to be healthy. And so every one of us should focus on big three areas. Hey, are you getting good good food in your system? Um, are you getting good sleep? And are you moving and exercising? Again, they didn't have to focus on that much exercise back then because all they ate was clean natural foods and all they did was walk everywhere they went for the most part. So for them, it wasn't it's something for us. It's like, no, no, we have sedentary lifestyles. We sit at desk all day. We sit in cars all day. And, and, and then we have garbage food around us. Well, they didn't have those issues. It is a much bigger deal for you and I to focus on our physical health. And look, he goes, even as your soul prospers. So he connects the two. Because the interesting thing is this. As you prosper in your thought life and in your emotions, that spills over in how your physical body responds and how healthy it is. So it's so important that you have, again, what I want to call a godly thought life. One that's not rooted in negativity 
or fear or doubt or disbelief, but a mindset that's rooted really in hope and faith and love. That's where your mind needs to go. And having your emotions, again, be in a healthy place. You're not surrounded by toxic people uh, who are constantly dumping on you, but rather you've got healthy, thriving relationships because God dearly cares that you prosper in all things. The same way you would think about it too. If you're a parent out there, you know that feeling. You look at your kids, you're like, no, I want them to prosper. I want them to be on that upward trajectory where God is blessing their entire life. Can I get an amen to that? Church, I love you so much. God bless you guys. I'll see you tomorrow.